Dear friends, I have been asked to give a lecture on Indian music. Like science or philosophy, music is also a vast subject, and I think myself not matured enough to deal with this great subject. However, today I will discuss some aspects of Indian music along with a brief history of it. The Veda is the oldest text of the Aryans, our ancestors. From that book, we come to know many things of that age. And for a long time, this Vedic civilization was the origin of Indian civilization. But after the discoveries of Mohenjo-daro and Harappa, scholars have been convinced that there used to exist a civilization of high order, even before the Aryans came. Among the exhibits found in the Dagab area, a flute with seven bowls, some string instruments, a bronze statue of a dancing male prove that music and dance did figure quite prominently in that civilization. This civilization is known as the Inda civilization. It flies roughly in 3000 to 2500 BC. There are four main divisions of the Veda, and one of the Veda, the Sam Veda, is the original source of Indian music. The Vedic era dates roughly from 2000 to 1000 BC. Sama means song. The sages used to chant the hymns with the help of Bina and Mirangam. And in this chanting, seven notes were used, like Sari, Gama, Padhani. And among the different styles of chanting, one style was known as Grama Beo. This style was gradually replaced by the Gandhavo or classical type of music. This type of music was confined to chanting and to religious festivals. In the second century, a talented person known as Bharatu compiled the Nasta Sastra following the footsteps of Samagana. This is the first book written on music which mentions Vadi, Sambadi, Anubadi and Vivadi. In the 12th century, great poet and musician Jayadevo composed the Gita Govindo. In this book, ragas and talas were elaborately discussed. And in this period, the standard of music has gone very high. In the 13th century, the Sangeet Ratnaka, written by Sarangadeva, is a detailed authoritative treatise on music. In it, he has classified and explained the arrangement and placement of the 22 sutis or microtones. After this, the Muslim period started. During the Mughal period in the 16th century, Indian music flourished to the maximum. The immortal artist Tansen developed Indian music to the highest degree. His compositions are incomparable in India, both in the quality of the music and in the poetic beauty of the words used. He has innumerable students in India. All his four sons, his daughters, and son-in-law are exponents of his music. The teacher of Dr. Alauddin Khan, or Uttar Wazir Khan, a descendant of Tansen. The 20th century is very much indebted to Dr. Alauddin Khan for his innumerable compositions and his valuable research in the field of Indian music. And also to consult Ali Akbar Khan and Pandit Ravi Shankar for many new contributions to our music and for popularizing Indian music all over the world. There are two classical schools of Indian music. First, 
the Hindustani school of the north and second the Carnatic school of the south. While the music of the north was influenced and enriched by the Persian and Arabic culture, Carnatic music has preserved the purity of its tradition. When North Indian music was enriched with the composition of Swami Haridas, South Indian music was inspired with the composition of Swami Tairaj. Both were saints and great spiritualists. Spiritual devotion is the source and basis of Indian music. Thus, the difference between Northern and Southern music is purely in style. The ancient music of India has been handed down from the master to disciple through the generations and an intimate and sacred association between them existed. This is called the Gurukul system. The disciple used to stay with the teacher and he was considered as one of the family. The student's duty was to satisfy the teacher with their sincerity, practice and service and the teacher's duty was to teach them all the aspects of the music with his rare experience and his realization of the music. Until and unless a student finishes his training course, he was not supposed to give any public performance and he used to obtain permission from the teacher before the first performance. The Vina is the oldest instrument of India. There are different types of Vina and the Sita is one type called the Kasha Vina. History says there was a type of instrument in the 12th century called the Three Tomitri Vina that was generally used for accompanying singing or dance. Three means three and Tantri means three. During that time, there are three strings used on the three on three instrument. In the 13th century, a great poet and musician from Parthia came to India. He introduced many new ragas into our music and modified instruments. His name was Amir Khosro. He kept the meaning of the three tonsi vina in the word sitar. C means three and tar means string. Then gradually seven strings were used instead of three. When again it was modified in the 19th century, and sympathetic strings were introduced. Dr. Alauddin Khan modified this instrument a lot. He introduced the bass strings, creating one octave more and increased the range of this instrument by introducing the ala in 15 parts, making the sita a complete instrument. But now I will discuss the practical side of Indian music. Let us start from the Raga. What is Raga? It is very difficult to define Raga. Like beauty, you can describe it but cannot define it. Indian music is based on Raga and Tala. The meaning of the word Raga is color or emotion. An artist can draw a picture with many colors and you can see it. But we can draw a picture with many notes, you cannot see it but you feel it. Raga is a framework for melody with fixed ascending and descending notes. It provides a continuity of expression which is frequently connected with the moods and emotions. Indian music is very much connected with nature. We have got morning ragas, afternoon ragas, evening, late evening and night ragas. As well as seasonal ragas such as the raga of spring and the raga of the rainy season. There are two main stages in the development of the raga. The first stage is alap and invocation or worship to God. Each may have 15 or more movements. Moods such as devotion, pathos and love are portrayed. The alap is considered the most difficult portion of Indian music and is only taught after the musician has mastered 
all other aspects of his heart. Taste of a great musician is his Allah. The invocation at first is slow without any rhythm. Then starts the joke with rhythm and finally with increased tempo the Thala parts complete the Allah. The second stage is the cut marked by the entrance of the Tabla and is a fixed composition. There are variations and a return to the cut. At the beginning, the Tabla keeps to the regular pattern of the Tala, but soon a conversation takes place. The instrument plays the fixed cut and the Tabla improvises, and then the Tabla returns to its basic pattern while the Sita improvises. Half sangat or accompanying together follows, in which both instrumentalists play a phrase and climax on the tone or first beat, often with each trying to trick the other by finishing just before the song. This can be followed by shawal dabab or question answer, in which the tabla directly imitates and sometimes replies the figures played by the star. The final state of dhala is reached in ever increasing tempo and virtuosity. A musician should not be judged merely by his speed or technical ability, but by his elaborate exposition and development of the dhala and in bringing out the mood and emotion of the dhala he is playing. Some people suggested I make a comparative study of Indian and Western music. I frankly admit that I have got very little knowledge about the Western music. The differences between India and Western music are fundamental. They relate to content as well as to technique. Indian music is melodic while Western music is harmonic. Western music is like a big picture whose various elements blame to produce a well-composed whole. Western music thus impresses its listeners as, as much by its range as by its harmony. The highest form of Indian musical art is entirely extempore, and the Indian musician is a creative artist. Thus, during the period of performance, a musician is a composer as well as a performer. For instance, while rendering a raga, he has ample scope for improvisation, whereas a Western musician may it life in an exact reproduction and interpretation of the works of great composers. Indian melody is governed by the raga. Its nearest equivalent in Western music would be moot, but the raga represents a more definite concept. The notes and their sequence are most important in our music and there is no modulation of any kind. Modulation and free change of keys are indeed the conditions of harmony in Western music. However, music is the most abstract form of all the arts, where words end, music talks. A great poet said, the supreme soul whom we cannot see, our music touches his feet. In the last, I would like to say that to learn and to understand Indian music, one should have some idea of Indian philosophy. It is said in your philosophy that the ultimate aim of each soul is realization. Realization of truth, realization of the supreme soul. In our music, particularly in the Allah person, there is a cry for the supreme soul. Surrender yourself to his feet, and that is why devotion and love of the Almighty is the basis of Indian music. Thank you. Now I will show you some practical side. <laughs> <laughs>
tuning our instrument in C, tonic, is in C. First thing, it is in F, that is Ma. Second one, C, in Sa. Third one, G, bass, or Pa. And this is the C, or bass C, or bass Sa. This is G. This is C. Last one, top C. And this in synthetic string, it is tuned according to the raga, which I play. Before that, Indian music was only that are only given to seven strings, no synthetic. But in the 19th century, the synthetic strings were introduced. And this is the string which allows in her time to introduce. And this string mainly used in ala portion.
try the new pattern. Do that.
Thank you.